Hey folks, I'm hoping you'll take just a moment and ignore the junkiness and ugliness of much of this room as it will be put more into place in the near future. But what I wanted to introduce you to is my new flight sim setup starring this 85 inch mega television. Now it's not my first venture into big screen. This 65 inch used to be my main display there straight ahead of me. And now it's my secondary display. There's the 85 inch kicking up Microsoft Flight Simulator. There's a smaller 32 inch, which I'm not sure exactly what use I'm going to put that one to. And then just for kickers, there's a fourth screen over here. Now, generally speaking, you can never have enough screens, especially in the old FSX days when you could have an exterior view or a view on an overhead or a, a particular view that you wanted to have always available. Having that extra screen really comes in handy. Now, so here's the main screen. You can see that my Garmin GNS 530 made by Real Sim Gear is connected using FSUIPC. We're just going through the last few stages of setting up Microsoft Flight Simulator. Here on top, I have my Track IR uh, sensor, which I wear on top of my ball cap. And I also have my Razer headphones. Just below that is the Bravo throttle. Right now it's set up for a Boeing two engine jet. But of course, you folks who have it know that you can configure it for four engines or for single prop or twin prop or a whole lot of configurations. But uh, this is the Bravo th throttle and my favorite trim wheel. And my number one landing gear I usually use is the Bravo throttle gear and the flaps set on the Bravo throttle. When it comes to tuning the radios on a small plane, I use this uh, Real Sim Gear GNS 530. There's no screen on it. I depend on the screen in the cockpit view for my screen, but I can roll around the CDI and the HD and the heading bug and the altitude bug and the speed bug, and I can tune all the radios. I can flip flop the VF, the number one com, number two com, number one nav, number two nav. Um, I can move, zoom in and out on the range. I can enter waypoints. I can enter VORs. So this really is my go-to and I'm really happy with that purchase. I also have a number pad on the side of my mouse. And what I use this for is when I'm using default ATC and I want to respond with a number, it'll have a, a list of numbers. I can respond one, two, three, four, five, with the numbers on the number pad. Um, and it's a quick, easy way of talking to ATC in a hurry. Uh, so right below the Bravo throttle is my keyboard. Boy, I wish there was a way of flight simming without the mouse and keyboard, but they are certainly a necessary part. Uh, not plugged in right now, but available for use are my uh, SATIC panels. Um, they're there for future use. Um, right now, the throw distance, the reach distance is a little on the far side. Uh, I, I can reach them. I can turn on the master power and hit the ignition switch and do some other things, but it's a bit of a bit of a distance. Now, for Airbus aircraft and for certain certain other applications, um, well, I'll tell you, one half of this I always use. These two outer levers become my vertical and my horizontal view axis. So on an exterior view, no matter what the simulator is, I can spin the plane around on the two axes using these outer throttle levers. Now they're not used very often for aircraft because I don't fly four engine jets that often. But for a two engine Airbus, this is perfect. Notice its position right where an Airbus throttle would usually be. And I have all the functionality uh, if, if I ever should have a four engine Airbus aircraft, it's all here set up uh, and ready to go. Now, one of my joys, oh, here's the uh, Gladiator NXT joystick. And I don't have any 
aircraft controls on this. I have a, my uh, hat and my uh, view sw or switches are set up for views. Uh, sometimes if I'm using Pushback Express or uh, Better Pushback, I use some of these buttons for those uh, commands to external programs. Uh, I have in the past used this throttle for not only uh, view panning, but also as a throttle in a single engine airplane. But I don't do that much anymore. Um, but this, uh, and I, if you've had the Gladiator before, you know it's a wonderful joystick. This NXT has the fact that it doesn't bounce around on the return. It's got a, a very stabilized return, and it's really a, a the, probably the most modern flight control you can get along with the pendular rudder pedals down here, um, toe brakes, rudder left and right. Now, usually on my chair, I have a butt kicker for feeling the uh, cracks in the asphalt and uh, other things, but right now I don't. And here's one of my pride and joy. Notice it's directly available to my left hand. This is my orb weaver. And the Orb Weaver, I got this idea from another flight simulator center. And this is my main view controls. Upper left corner toggles between exterior and exterior. Then the next nine buttons, four on the top and five below it, these are the uh, controls that I have set up on my own. And then the 10 down here are the default views. So if I'm first starting off with an airplane, I'll start with the default views. And then if I find I, I want to have a custom view for something, then I'll create it and use these top nine buttons. But the top one, uh, I should say, the top upper left corner and also this pad down on my thumb, those are both toggles that will go inside and outside the flight deck. So here we are. We're all set up for a flight. Uh, my last flight was in the Gossack, so there's probably no reason to change from that plane. Let's pick a departure airport. One I like a lot is um, not Norfolk. I just flew out of Norfolk. That's not the one I want. I want, uh, well, the one I really want is Key West. I don't see it. I'll just go to, we'll go to Miramar, San Diego. That's realistic for a Navy plane. And current weather, current time. Again, this is an 85 inch screen. Right up there is my control for track IR, head tracking. And on top of that monitor, you can see my stream cam for streaming my ugly mug onto the web page. Oh, how nice to have a cat. Oh, and I didn't mention it. It's not pushed up right now. I have a piano bench back here. And uh, I'll have it set up right here in just a little bit. And on top of that piano bench will be my little cat bed and cat brusher. My cat Sally will come and join me and she will sit the piano bench, the cat bed, and the brush will be right here below my right arm. And she'll be available to me during the flight. Usually my flying time is usually between 4.30 in the morning and 8 o'clock. And uh, sometimes I turn on the radio in the background to have a little music in the background. You can hear my normal call sign is Regal Legal. So here, notice how I'm gonna use my levers. I'm getting a prompt from uh, Navla. I'm gonna use my levers to control the exterior axis of the airplane. Here's vertical control. I'm sorry, horizontal control. And here's vertical control. And then uh, the aircraft just spawned right in front of me. I can come down to my orb weaver and I can hit the number one button and we'll be in the aircraft, zooming in and out with my mouse wheel as necessary, changing the default views with the orb weaver. 
there's the uh, I don't know what number button that is. I don't know them by their numbers. I know them by their functionality and their I learned their play, I, you know finger memory onto their placement so I can uh, zoom around the, the flight deck like that. Of course, on the yoke with the little uh, uh, hat switch, I can pan around like this with uh, track IR, I would be able to move around the cockpit with my head. That is not on right now. And then what I can do is I can take the any screen that I want, but I want it somewhere else. Uh, hit that little button up there. And we'll move that thing over to the monster screen. I gotta, there it is. And I don't know if we need to take up the whole screen, but we certainly can use a good chunk of it. Great. And when, if I want to respond to air, so that's not in my view. If I wanted to respond to air traffic control, remember my one, two, three buttons are set up for uh, the radio response. I also have the four button and the six button set up for different functions. One of them is to pause and one of them is to exit and some other uh, flight simulator functions. But uh, that's my basic setup. The orb weaver for views, the track IR to move my head, or, uh, follow my head movements when it's working, the stream cam for get, letting you look at my ugly mug, the SATIC panels for use in the future, my Razer headset and track IR sensors, my Bravo throttle for almost every airplane, single engine. Right now it's set up for single engine jet. So I've got the spoiler control. This airplane does have a spoiler. Let's go outside and we can see the, come on. Oh, gotta get the, click over here, outside. You can see the spoilers work by using the spoiler lever. The flaps work by using the flaps lever. The throttle works. Ooh, that baby wants to go. She wants to go. Lost my, I lost my internal view somehow. That's okay. It happens from time to time. There we go. It's a lot quieter in here. <laughs> okay. And the two add-ons, which are the right add-on for the parking brake and the. Uh, flaps in an Airbus. I don't use this for anything but the Airbus. The spoiler for the Airbus, the auto brake, landing gear, engine mode, and engine start switches. Usually these two with the detents are used for the Airbus throttle. If I have a four engine Airbus, I can use these, but these are mostly used for view control. And there's my rig, and you have just had a walk around of my flight deck cockpit. Hope you enjoyed. Bye.